Fifteen, Mr. Lackey here in the lab space at the back of our classroom. And this is a follow-up video that goes with the one that we did in class together uh, as I'm recording this today. So if you haven't yet watched that video or you didn't attend live class for September 16th, where we had the cans in the mystery float juice, um, you might want to go back and watch that because we're going to build on those ideas in this because we're going to basically do an example together and then have some follow-up quiz questions that both go with the example and build on the ideas that we learned in live class. So what I've got here today, um, this is what we call a density column. So let me go ahead and show this a little more clearly. Uh, what I have is two different liquids. You can see the bottom one is red and the top one is kind of a clearish yellow. And you can see that these two liquids have different densities. Um, they also don't like to interact with each other and so they're not mixing. But if you go back to the thing that we watched in the video today, um, we should be able to tell just by looking at these which one of these is more dense. Uh, we should know something about the densities here based on how they're arranging themselves in the column. Um, another thing I want to point out, uh, I don't know the mass, I didn't record the mass of these, but I do have an idea of the volume because they're in a graduated cylinder. So the volume of the red liquid is just under 40. And then the yellow liquid goes from about 39 up to about 80. So I actually have slightly more of the yellow liquid and slightly less of the red liquid. So I do know something about their volume and hopefully I can know something about their density. Now our classroom example today had to do with liquids and we're going to build on that idea by including some solids here today. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dropping some things in our density column and seeing uh, whether they sink or they float. And the things we're going to drop in there are going to be solids. Um, let's set this aside for a second. Let's look at some of our contestants for the day. So um, I have a scale right over here. I took a second and I'm going to show your three contestants. So let's start with the lightest one first. Our lightest contestant of the day is this tiny little plastic cube. It was something around 0.6 grams. So this one happened to be the very lightest one in terms of mass. Um, the next step was our uh, tongue depressor. This one was only about a popsicle stick, I guess. This one was a little over one gram, about 1.2 grams or so. So about twice as heavy as the little plastic cube was. And then the big bruiser, we've got a marble. The marble was a little over three grams. Okay, so if we're talking about in terms of mass, um, we know this is the heaviest, then this one came next, it's a little bit heavier, and then the lightest one was here. Um, so those are some of the properties of matter we've talked about. We could also do volume, right? So in terms of a volume, this one here, not only does it have the lightest mass, it's taking up the least space. If I compare it, um, even though this one's a cube and this one's a sphere, I can actually tell though this one is a little bit smaller. Next up in terms of volume, actually the heaviest one has the middle volume. And then the most volume, the thing that's taking up the most space, is our popsicle stick. Even if I broke that down into a cube, it would certainly be bigger than this one or this one. Okay? Um, that maybe gives you an idea of what you think is going to sink, or maybe uh, gives you an idea of what you think is going to float. In fact, maybe you should make a little mental prediction right now. Which of these do you think will sink? Which of them do you think will float? Do you think they'll all sink? All float? I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and start with some examples. So our very first one, we're going to take our big bruiser. We're going to take our marble. And we're going to go ahead and drop it in. And I'm going to try to move this up a little bit closer so you can see the whole thing here. And all right, I've got my solid going into two liquids here. And Geronimo. OK. I don't know if you can see it, there's some liquids getting released from the bottom there, but our big bruiser is resting at the bottom of our call, right? So that tells me something about the density here. Now I've got three things that I can compare the density of. I should have at least, I can't do the numbers maybe, but I can say something about the density of this and something about the density of this, and then now I should be able to say something about the density of the marble. Okay, just for the sake of uh, having enough space to drop things in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop our tiny, tiny little ones. You may have an idea of what you think is going to happen here. And here we go. Hopefully you can see it here. 
not moving through quite as quickly. And actually, let me hold that up to the camera, coming to rest right between our two layers. So now I've got a solid that went all the way to the bottom of my red layer. I've got a solid that went to the bottom of my golden yellow layer. Okay. Um, all right. So remember, this was my lightest one. This was my heaviest one. I'm about to drop the one that had the mass in between these two. So let's take a second here, and uh, maybe you can make your mental prediction. Now, I want to show you for this one, because it's so long, it's longer than either of the columns, what I actually did is I took it and I broke it down into a tiny little, kind of like a cube. It's all still connected. It's one big piece, so I'm not breaking it up into smaller pieces here. But I wanted to make it small enough so that we can actually tell exactly where it's resting, because that long one kind of reaches um, across multiple spaces, and it's hard to tell where it's exactly coming to rest. Okay, so now we're going to take our one with our middle mass, and we're going to drop it in here. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is what we've got here. So our middle mass here is coming to rest. Well, I'll use this as a pointer. Here's the one that had our middle mass, mass coming to rest up here. Here's the one that had the least mass coming to rest right here in the middle. And then the one with the most mass coming to rest down here at the bottom. Um, this hopefully is helping point out to you that maybe mass isn't the best predictor of the things that are going to sink and float. And if you attended live class, uh, I think you hopefully have a better idea of we're not just looking at the behavior of things of different masses here. There's something else that's a real key component. Um, there is going to be a follow-up quiz with some questions on this. Before you take the quiz, you may want to take a second, pause the video, maybe do a little sketch of how things landed in the column. You might draw, say, the wood landed on top, the plastic cube was in the middle between my two layers, and then at the very bottom, I had my marble. And those things will help you answer our quiz questions.